Peter, I think we can start. Uh, okay. I think people here yeah, will join us a little bit later. Uh, at this moment we have uh, five participants, but I think more people will join us. So uh, welcome to our webinar and I would like to introduce uh, Peter. Uh, he is, uh, at this moment, his role is, uh, what is the right name of your role, Peter, at this moment? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Yes. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. It's Peter here, uh, speaking from London, actually. Uh, my role is University Partnership and Progression Director for On Campus, giving special assistance to all our teams internationally, globally, and to our colleagues working uh, in the field of international education. Uh, to keep uh, attraction to the UK and to promote the best of our academic programs. So, um, good morning, everyone. Yeah. So, I, I don't know if people can see the first screen. Has that come up? Yes, I can see it. Yeah. Uh, just, yeah, maybe if you don't see any uh, slides on your screen, just uh, tap in the chat, please. Uh, so, yes, I can easily forward on the, the uh, slideshow, the slide deck, and also I do have information particularly on this program because this is a very popular course, uh, but it's quite selective uh, because Olga has asked me to talk about the on-campus program known as the IFP, the University of London International Foundation program, which some of you already perhaps know pretty well. It's a excellent course and it attracts the best of students to then progress on to the best of, of universities. As you know, on campus has a good record of um, working with uh, leading universities. Um, just trying to remind people maybe where, where we are. We're actually a, a centre based in central London in Bloomsbury, which is next to the British Museum and the British Library and also neighbours to UCL and so as. This is the main building of Birkbeck University of London, where our teaching is found on, a, well, at the moment it's all online, but normally it, uh, it's found on the top floors there, actually, of Birkbeck um, College University of London. Maybe not as well known as some of the others, but uh, still a University of London college. The next door to us actually is this big white building. This is the Senate House of University of London. And those of you who have visited us before, you perhaps may have gone around on the tour. And this is the awarding body for University of London degrees, certificates and awards and diplomas, and also the awarding body for our International Foundation Programme, the IFP. Um, and this is where our students also have opportunity to nip next door and study in the main library. But I'll come back to this uh, location in a moment. This is the Senate House. Left hand side there is SOAS actually. So, and right hand side is Birkbeck up by the trees. So it's pretty close proximity with the pool of knowledge. In fact, this whole area now has been relabeled, renamed as the Knowledge Quarter, including the British Museum and all the new developments of Google and uh, near uh, Euston and St Pancras in the area of Camden, Bloomsbury. Uh, just as a quick uh, recap, these are the different colleges, the 28 colleges and more that make up the Federation of the University of London. And uh, some of these uh, are big names indeed. And uh, we have a 10 year record of on campus delivering students to nearly nearly most of these University of London colleges uh, taught programs um, and uh, we have uh, formal partnerships with a good six or seven of them and some of the colleges now are expressing interest in joining our our consortium as well um, but there you've got many of the names King's College, Queen Mary, uh, Royal Holloway, Goldsmiths, uh, so as these tend to be the most popular with our students. LSE particularly uh, uh, is the attraction for students joining the IFP and I'm going to expand on that uh, in, a, in a moment. Highlights of the of on campus, uh, no doubt Olga and the team have told you more uh, about the special relationships and the progression opportunities for our students progressing on to our partners that give guaranteed entry to our students if they progress with the right grades and requirements. Um, at the moment, many of those colleges like Queen Mary has uh, made over well over 100 offers to our students and will probably continue to do so with the January cohort applying uh, this March and April. 
And so we're looking at normally 160, 180 offers being made to our students uh, individually from, from uh, just one of these partners alone. But we have six main partners, um, Royal Holloway also, uh, Goldsmiths, popular for social sciences, and then the two particular institutes that are attractive in the areas of uh, veterinary science and, uh, and uh, history of art. I don't think I need to say that much about the the uh, the, the aspects and the rankings of these universities. Uh, they're all highly regarded. Um, they're all QS ranked. A uh, majority of all our students tend to progress to a good UQS top ranking of universities, particularly the IFP, where year after year after the last six, seven years, they've been progressing on to not just LSE, but King's College, Warwick, uh, many of the top ranking Lancaster, Last year, uh, uh, any of the top ranking 20 UK universities, if not top ranked um, in the world. So students can progress to London, but also to nearly all the other uh, universities I've just mentioned. Um, interesting enough, this year Durham seems to be very popular. Uh, because students don't always uh, wish to stay in London. Um, obviously, the, the global uh, pandemic is affecting everyone everywhere and uh, that's affecting aspects of study and uh, uh, travel bans and measures and also self-isolation so it's a it's a challenging time at the moment for all of us um, globally uh, but at the same time um, on campus London is making plans like all the other UK, UK universities to prepare for an autumn term of teaching um, might not necessarily be from September but all our institutes and uh, on campus is preparing for planning for uh, returning to an aspect of norm norm normality or normancy so that we can continue with giving the best of opportunities in learning and education to our students and to international students as before. Um, but this, this is the sort of uh, selection of most of the uh, progression for our undergraduate pre-degree students, as well as the postgraduate pre-degree programmes we run. But I've been asked to talk specifically about the IFP. Uh, the IFP is uh, a, a gold standard, actually, I would say, uh, in it, how it's viewed by universities and employers. We've been running the programme for a good six years or so. And so the tracking of our students through not just uh, university and um, LSE and the King's College and the like, but also into their field of employment, whether they're entering in the field of finance or law, it's pretty impressive indeed. And many of them still commenting uh, on the uh, confidences and the skills that they learned from the IFP and readiness to obtain very good first class uh, top top degrees from their first undergraduate going on to postgraduate as well. On campus London is actually a teaching, recognised teaching centre of the University of London. So we acquired this uh, several years ago and this is a status awarded by University of London for schools, colleges, institutes that show that they have high, high outcome quality teaching and uh, outcome of students in progression for undergraduate and postgraduate. So there is a global network of recognised teaching centres. This is just a quick map to show where most of them are centred. Um, it does appear as if they're all in Asia, but if I share with you, there are those in America and also in Europe. This is a, an outline of the uh, university itself. I'm, I'm sure with your part of the world and interest in international education, University of London comes up a lot in students' preferences and choices. But we're looking at more or less 150 year old history of the University of London itself. But Beck itself is coming up to its 200th anniversary, interesting enough. Um, and that will be celebrated quite soon when it was founded uh, way back uh, in the Victorian, early Victorian times. The Re University of London itself, as you know, has a high reputation for academic standards and nearly all the institutes we work with there, um, for example, uh, Queen Mary and, and uh, Bert Beck, uh, Goldsmiths, they are regarded as, as research intensive institutes. Um, the most notable one of that is LSE, uh, which is significantly research focused uh, with majority of its students on postgraduate programmes, but also undergraduate teaching uh, and also UCL. 
So the award that's given from students successfully completing on the IFP is a University of London Certificate Award, uh, level three, which gives it the same equivalence as a GCEA level and uh, or the baccalaureate or something similar in terms of of international uh, high school certificates um, the examinations are also uh, set up and arranged and uh, uh, delivered by london university itself and uh, we're the teaching center we've been teaching this program highly successfully for since the beginning actually and every year we receive a commendation letter from the university of london complimenting us on our outstanding results and the hard work of students and uh, our, our teachers year by year. So in terms of equivalence, it has credit bearing uh, uh, up to 60 credits. So that way it's formally recognized nationally, equivalent to A-level and OB everywhere and internationally as well, which is which makes it a very special program. And that certificate the students get will come from University of London. Uh, which normally is uh, around about the uh, October time when A-level certificates are issued as well. So students, uh, your students who express interest uh, wishing to join the, the IFP, we do have an entrance uh, assessment which Olga and her team will explain a little bit more so that we can choose the students with the right attributes, the right uh, ambition, the right qualities, particularly in certain subject areas uh, in the field of maths and statistics, com competence with number, uh, not that they have to study maths, but also uh, language levels, uh, writing levels in English. So um, students registering with us as on Campus London also register as a student of the University of London, which actually gives them special benefits and privileges within the domain of University of London worldwide, uh, access to the Senate Library, etc. Um, they study with us next door in Birkbeck, and uh, they also have their own ID cards and membership of that Beck University of Library uh, and so on. But the programme also gives them opportunity for access to other parts of University of London and to other libraries and research and also lectures too, which I'll expand on. Um, we've been teaching the programme for quite a number of years and still uh, excellent teachers are delivering that program because they they love the, the course and the course is very special it's different from your standard a levels it's um, based on curriculum designed by university of london and lse and it's very contemporary focused which means that many of the the topics that come under the different modules economics politics sociology law tend to be issues that the world is facing uh well, more or less like now uh, but but uh, drawn from the last uh, global issues, whether it's climatic change, trade wars, um, it'll be drawn from those uh, topics and case studies uh, of the last five, ten years, but also historical perspective as well, particularly uh, of the, the 20th century. The course is actually highly regarded, not just by UK universities, but also by a group of uh, US and uh, European and uh, uh, Australian universities. So it, that's why it's, it has a big reach because University of London has its own sort of networking and its own operation to set up these centres, but also recognition uh, by different international education systems themselves. So uh, what we look for really for this particular program is uh, a pretty strong level of English, a little bit above the norm for a foundation course. Uh, we would like to see something like 5.5 uh, and above uh, school qualifications from high school uh, in, in whatever country nation need to be pretty respectable at, at, of a good order. Um, if students have done GCSEs before in an international schooling setting, that's fine. But we would be looking for a good uh, range of at least six or seven respectable GCSEs at, at top level, although minimum qualification for University of London is normally five GCSEs at past level, um, but we, we tend to edge it up a little bit more. Most importantly is a student to have a passion for learning and that comes across, uh, should come across in the Skype interview. And I have to share with Olga and, and, and you as colleagues is that many of the students who have joined us from from Russia or from Ukraine and Belarus, et cetera, they, they all have that, that extra enthusiasm and determination and, that, and that's wonderful. Um, 
goals would be to progress to a top UK university, which this course has been designed to 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 bolster and 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 give platform for, and uh, with the strong ambition for making their mark professionally as a university uh, UK graduate or University of London graduate, uh, with a view to making a difference, and that that is quite important as many of our students are, are achieving that already. Um, so uh, what makes the course so special is it's quite a tough course. It's uh, it has its challenges. Um, students um, will need to study uh, four modules four academic modules uh, from a range of selection. Um, those are the modules that we deliver um, quite successfully year by year. Uh, the, the selection of those modules to some extent uh, depends on the degree that they're aiming for, whether it's economics or finance or politics, international relations uh, or sociology. So um, the students, though, have to complete all four uh, and also complete them successfully so as to pass the program. Um, if I advise a student who wants to perhaps do finance, uh, where quite a few of our students went on to progress to to top ranked universities last year from this course, including LSE for finance. Um, the combination would be to take modules such as uh, pure mathematics, uh, economics, uh, his, uh, history of art, uh, sorry, um, international relations. Uh, those tend to be the, the best blend because the, these subjects modules are all mostly interdisciplinary so they're interwoven so if a student is to try and understand uh, the financial aspects of global economies therefore by understanding international relations and world politics they have a better understanding of the risk factor and understanding of political systems how countries relate for example the tensions before christmas we have even greater tensions now i know globally but trade wars between um, um, america us and china which is exacerbating even further, probably, but that that would have been a, an exam question uh, on on that uh, past paper and the one before, linked to trade and economy. Uh, students interested in international relations, perhaps more on a social science humanities, going on to do a degree at King's College or, or, or uh, Bristol, for example. Uh, that would have been a module combination would make sense to draw on the uh, interest for and the interrelationship of soci social sciences with IR, sociology, uh, perhaps economics or, or law. Um, maths and stats is listed on this slide as a core module. That's just changed, actually. Um, it's not necessarily the case that students uh, need to do the maths and stats um, as a core, although we strongly, strongly advise it. Um, because uh, and it's not a high level of A level math, uh, statistics. It, it's a core area of top GCSE to the level, so for example. Um, it's because uh, students need to be introduced to statistics best before they start their degree programs at top ranked universities because um, everything that is drawn in terms of uh, study comes from evidence and statistics uh, provides a lot of those patterns for students to have a better understanding as to the real facts, the real truth, in, instead of just uh, assumptions and generalistic theories, etc. So um, we would encourage a combination of those subjects of the maths and stats as a module. Um, to pass a 40%, although most of our universities would ask for distinctions or merits, and nearly majority would be 6.5 as a minimum, Although most of the students on the IFP go on to progress uh, with the accomplishment of seven and above. So here's a quick summary of uh, of uh, what I've just described as terms of program content. Um, the exciting thing with the uh, UOL IFP is students don't just work on our uh, in, uh, Moodle system, but they also have access to the the virtual portal for University of London itself, because most of the learning materials is found on the uh, virtual learning platform from University of London and study guides, material assessments, past papers, video, everything is found on that as you would expect with um, any uh, University of London college and students also um, can network with different teaching centres throughout the world, talking and relating to other students on the similar programme elsewhere in different parts of the world. 
Cost is a little bit more expensive than most because uh, all our programmes with the University of London, we have to uh, register them with uh, the University of London itself. So there's a, a slightly higher fee for that programme. Uh, students joining this course uh, can join at 17. Um, nothing younger, I'm afraid, uh, with because the course only starts as September start date and um, that's quite important to recognize whereas our other UFP courses we have January start date etc but September registration is with on campus London and University of London itself uh, and that will uh, progress from um, October uh, this coming term um, if everything goes according to plan. Well, if Catherine's on the on the line I can introduce Catherine. Hello, Peter. I am. Good morning, <laughs> Catherine. Catherine is our, our higher education uh, coordinator for partnerships and progression based at On Campus London. Um, uh, how we manage to help prepare students is to give them that extra uh, support and confidence in making the right selections for their degree. No doubt with your teams and counsellors, they already would have an idea of what they're hoping to do. But uh, Catherine heads up a, a team of staff to support all students in their university applications and to, to get it right in terms of focus of the right degree, the right university and, and the right expectation and ambition. Catherine, would you like to explain a little bit more as to how we give that support literally from the day one experience when students register and join us? Absolutely. Um, so as Peter said, it's a really vital function of the program that we're not just delivering the academic um, modules for students, but also supporting them from day one with the process of applying for their progression degree. So I um, coordinate the HE team. That means dedicated staff who um, do nothing but look at university applications and counselling and supporting students through the process, as well as tutors who support with um, statement drafting and guidance um, you know that we work with throughout the the staff as well so um, from day one when students join us on the program as part of their induction we would meet with them individually and the higher education team would have an individual meeting with every student to straight away assess their expectations their aims their academic background and to make sure that we have matched not just the modules that they are going to study with us but their um, their aims for, for where they're going next. So we need to identify that they've got the academic background for where they're aiming. And a lot of what we do is managing expectations, identifying straight away our, our outstanding students who really should be aiming to apply to LSE and the other institutions that, that Peter's outlined. And those students who you know will also need to look at um, universities with lower entry requirements and certainly have an insurance choice there because unexpected things can happen. So we do that from day one with the um, interview. We'd also work with the student at that point to make sure that they were studying the correct elective modules to progress on to the degree that they are aiming for. From that point, then in their first term, they would have weekly seminars with HE Tutor to go through, um, prepare them to research which institutions they wish to apply to, um, the degrees that they wish to apply to, and to start writing their personal statement. So a lot of the support we give is to make sure students have um, a quality personal statement, especially for the International Foundation Program, where a lot of the top universities in the UK will very closely look at that statement. Um, so, you know, the support that's on this slide is given to all students that come through um, on campus London, but I think it's definitely fair to say that we have tailored support for our International Foundation Programme students who will be aiming at those top universities um, and will have certain expectations. So a lot of that happens in the first term because most of our students will be needing to complete their application through UCAS, which is the um, platform that we use in the UK for undergraduate um, applications that we are experts in. So we guide them through the process of registering, getting set up on UCAS, and there is a deadline for applications to be submitted through UCAS that is mid-January. So a lot of that work happens in the first term, and that's why we meet with students in, in the induction straight away to start getting them working on their own research and also providing as much guidance and support as we can. So then we move into our second term where the support doesn't go away. We continue um, where there are students who may be uh, called to interview 
or to additional entrance exams. We provide practice um, and support through that. And also making sure that universities have all of the information that they need to make a decision on their application. For some students who are potentially applying to less competitive courses, on the International Foundation Programme, we have a lot of students interested in humanities or social science subjects. It may be suitable to apply after the 15th of January deadline. Um, for the less competitive courses, certainly their applications would be considered. International students have until the 30th of June for most courses in the UK. Um, so through the second term, we would still be supporting some students to finalise their, their application. And then all the way through into the third term where my team supports with reviewing their offers that they receive, making a final decision on where they will progress and supporting through the process of getting their transcript, sending that to universities and potentially going through the clearing system if they haven't achieved the results they were hoping for. So we're sort of all the way through every step of the way to give support, but also to empower students and make sure that they understand what is their responsibility to take on, you know, um, confidence in making these decisions for themselves. So I think that kind of outlines most of what we do. I don't know if you want to add anything on that slide, Peter, or move on to the next one. No, that's that's good. Um, thank you. Uh, the next one coming up should come up now. Uh, this is always a problem, isn't it? It freezes. So oh dear. You could. Um, sorry. You could just, ex is that, yeah. Could you just expand on the uh, engagement we have, Catherine, with our partner universities and yeah. also with the uh, University of London, um, the international staff with yeah. the lectures and so on, give an idea of how we kick off with that, even from the first week of the academic year with induction. Yeah, I think it's really important that students become comfortable with our partner universities and what they offer, their different personalities and unique um, selling points. So, and also get used to the the environment that they will be in, in, um, in their progression degree. So because of that, my team is also responsible for organising guest lectures um, and making sure that we promote to students all of the opportunities that they have as part of the University of London and studying in this you know, historic district of London, where they do have access to attend LSE evening lectures, um, actually, a lot of the universities have evening or dedicated lectures for students who are at this level. Um, so we advertise those to students and support them in attending, make sure that they um, meet and are familiar with our partner universities. So we have not just guest academic lectures, but um, we have sessions where presentations are given from the admissions departments at our partner universities to familiarise students with everything that they are doing. Um, and then I think Peter's already touched on the sort of access that the International Foundation Programme students have to the University of London Library um, and any talks that are limited to University of London students. Um, and then we can arrange as well, as it says, one to one appointments or um, contact with the universities where students have particular questions about their progression degree. That's right. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, uh, the ones one it, it, it is often face to face, but it can be online as well. And uh, for example, uh, although um, all teaching is found and advice is found online at the moment with the, uh, the, the semi lockdown, with everyone working uh, in self isolation across all the spectrum of UK but, and universities and colleges and schools like ours, um, uh, we're give, continuing to give support to students who still have uh, applications outstanding just recently. We had one of the IFP students who went who applied for Cambridge as a mature student. And she had her interview last week, so I was on on Skype quite a bit, giving her back, giving her support in preparation and mock interviews for those applications that she was making to Cambridge University. So interesting. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for that that run through on how we support the students best with our expertise and the guidance for making the best quality application. Uh, to university for undergraduate studies um, because the IFP has been in situ for quite a number of years it's got a very good reputation and track record um, for progression on to nearly all the, the, the universities but all the best ranked universities and uh, this is a list uh, compiled from our centre 
with uh, the University of London sharing their information to where students have applied elsewhere and been accepted year by year onto undergraduate degrees. Uh, for us, the ones slightly shaded darker in bold, Bristol or your CAS or your Durham, tend to be the, the most popular ones with our progression from our centre. Uh, this year we've had, uh, correct me uh, if I'm, uh, I'm wrong, Catherine, we've had about 35 IFB students uh, studying on this, this programme. Um, Edinburgh this year is, is proving popular. Business, King's College, as always, uh, we, we, we have something like 58 offers being made to all our pre-degree undergraduate students this year. And normally every year we have 20 or so students progressing, achieving the grades, moving on to King's College or your Lancaster. Uh, a year ago, uh, LSE, we had uh, a Ukrainian student doing extremely well and he progressed uh, on to finance uh, with other students at LSE. And I'm going to explain a little bit more uh, of the selection criteria for LSE by LSE of all our IFP students. And I'll expand on the UGAA entrance test that they have. And uh, popularity also for Warwick and New York, uh, Bristol's and the like. And if a student has a satisfactory A-level profile or, or is perhaps touching up their retake of A-level maths alongside our IFP, they have the prospect of achieving a tariff for even U UCL, but that, that is quite rare and, and um, students do have the opportunity there. The programme is also recognised globally and uh, this is a list of uh, na nation, uh, international universities that accept uh, IFP students in the past. Um, uh, it's quite interesting to see United States there as a platform uh, with the entry requirements uh, being requested of IFP at merit or distinction with the IELTS uh, for entrance, same as maybe A-levels and baccalaureate. Uh, a few years ago, we had students progressing from the IFP who had wonderful offers from UK, but also offers from Australia. And there you've got a listing of uh, several of them where they progressed from our program on to Australian ANU and other universities uh, in Australia uh, with a different education system and lifestyle and opportunity altogether. But normally, uh, year by year, Olga would have shared you the updates uh, that we have uh, with students. Uh, it tends to be a clustering of uh, progressions uh, for LSE or Lancaster or Durham, King's College particularly, Fitz London. Um, and, and other leading universities uh, across the UK. Um, oh yeah, right, <laughs> he went on to a degree at Burbank. Uh, <laughs> um, thank you, Catherine, for running through uh, these sort of pr practical tips also for the UCAS application. Uh, from me, I would say, and from Catherine, her team, we always encourage, as you know, as you do uh, as well, is for students to research carefully into those degree courses and those institutes that they're selecting. And quite a number of students on the IFP achieve that. Those who, who have a vague idea of, oh, I must apply to LSE or King's College is quickly knocked into shape because they have to have a confidence of what the modules are in that first and second year of degree so that it proves to, to us that they're actually reading and looking into those courses in detail. So reading up on those first year modules so as to become familiar with the topics and make sure that it's the right choice and decision and ambition that they're making. Um, LSE also, if it's particularly LSE, it's an excellent website. It, they are highly transparent in everything that they feel they have to give advice and guidance to students on entry requirements or selection criteria. It's a little bit weighty when you look at their sections on their website, but at the same time, it's all there and it, it does mean to read it through carefully and there is an excellent opportunity of online inquiries and getting advice uh, from from the advisory groups um, at LSE as well. When it comes to the personal statement, uh, many of you are experienced in giving support to students um, over the years and continue to do so uh, with the nature of IFP students and their, their PS statement Obviously, it will be read quite keenly by the admissions tutors and it needs to be obviously personal. It needs to have an uh, aspect of enthusiasm and, and being inspired, uh, inspiration for the subject and reasons why. With evidence, it needs to be authentic 
And my general statement in summary is say it needs to be an academic statement. Um, having been a, a head teacher and head of sixth form in schools, uh, yes, it's very good to talk about extracurricular activities and leadership of house, etc. They're all very relevant, but the emphasis is on academic and why one is attracted to that subject area and how has one been inspired and what one wants to learn more in depth on that subject area and the fascination for that opportunity of, on those degree courses and the lecturers and the opportunity of studying at that leading university. Focusing hard on English language, uh, we have to stress that even though our students come through on a, on a good level at the beginning, they have to aspire to seven IELTS and above as an outcome in all bands. And that's often if the student does get an offer from LSE or from King's College or Queen Mary for law at the like, it will be at seven uh, as IELTS, uh, uh, but in every uh, subscore band as well. Preparation, the course itself is focused on global issues, problem solving, contemporary topics. Um, but the student who's who's showing interest coming in the first term, this is why it's important that students should do a little bit of preparation and pre-reading. And we have a, a reading list, a pre-reading list that goes out to students who register on the IFP, sharing our, our, our advice and recommendation on readings and articles. And so uh, this is important that students have an enthusiasm for reading, not just online, but looking at stories, looking at biographies, looking at international news, BBC, World News, um, whatever part of the world, but getting a balance on that perspective and media presentation from different perspectives. Also, my advice would be for a student to try and gain work experience, not always easily, easily possible in some parts of the world here. It's very much in, in, in encouraged in our schooling system, even at the age of 13, 14. But uh, work insight, interviews with people in the field of, of whether it's finance or politics, um, uh, to, to actually have an insight into that type of field of, of work or industry, employment and what it means. So, um, and also very important for all University of London applications, students to be engaged in social action um, in terms of voluntary work. Um, that could be raising uh, funding, fine fundraising for charities. It could be voluntary work, working with the elderly at this time of our situation with the pandemic. In the UK, uh, there's options um, of giving just general support, not direct line, but also just giving general fundraising and support to, to key workers. And also all students to have an interest in, in their own national development of their country and the region in terms of development. Obviously we're f facing critical times at the moment, but uh, the, the pandemic at some time will come to an end and we have to be ready for the next stages of development with something like this. But change is constant. Change, uh, the impact of, of, of this global situation is going to impact on economies, industry, the way we work, the way we interact, social interaction, etc. And that's all about change in society, change in developments and being having an understanding but an academic insight into that, um, those developments as well as they become global graduates um, in the future. Uh, sorry, I tend to have a lot to say here. So um, some queries came back from a previous presentation about the UGA entrance test, if I can expand on that. So students who apply for LSE with the good work of Catherine and her team applying through UCAS, uh, LSE received those like all the other university preferences they've, they've targeted, and then they will look through those applications. And if they like the strength of the application, the background, meeting the other aspects of entry criteria, they will invite uh, a, the foundation student, IFP student, they will invite students to take the UGA entrance test. And this is open uh, uh, assessment, so as to bring fairness and equity to the application cycle. And also remember that LSE is in the top 10 in the world, and many of the universities like Cambridge and Oxford have similar, similar arrangements. So the UGA entrance test uh, occurs in, in end of February, early March. And it's a, it's a test that's actually quite similar to the one that uh, we set for our students for entrance for the IFP, though at much more deeper advanced level. And what it requires is uh, obviously good writing skills. There is a maths test paper uh, as part of that uh, UGA entrance test. 
Uh, the topics will be drawn from much of the area that the students are studying on the IFP anyway, and the way that we teach the programme, the expert teachers are focusing on critical perspective and thinking skills already embedded in the IFP programme. So IFP students tend to be well prepared. And uh, what I have next is uh, links to the uh, websites for LSE. And if you have time, I'll forward this through to Olga and also on a crib sheet to, to give you extra information because this is very important reading for students if they're thinking of LSE as an application. And uh, the UGA entrance test is quite challenging. There are uh, past papers listed as well, but what is interesting, which I encourage all, all colleagues to look at, is the openness of the LSE admissions report where it expands on the ratio of application to offers for certain subject areas. And this is a very useful report to see uh, those degree courses, which are very highly competitive, and they tend to be the more quantitative based ones, economics and finance, but also it categorizes the lesser, and it's still, well, still lesser competitive, but still highly competitive to, within that top scale of the social sciences, subjects like sociology, anthropology, um, different areas in terms of humanities and social sciences where there's a better ratio of application uh, of being selected. And also past test papers, uh, again, is all accessible from the LSE website. Um, I won't have time to go through this on this presentation, but even from, from the, the copy, if you, you click through, you'll be able to see the challenging aspect of those past pa of those pa those papers. Two and a half hours to accomplish uh, um, to accomplish a comprehension article, uh, questions and a uh, choice of one essay out of three. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it's, it's quite deep as the topics and then a maths uh, uh, demanding paper uh, for the rest of the hour or so uh, for um, mathematics and statistics. For students doing quantitative based degree courses, there's a different section where the questions for the maths and stats is much harder and uh, a little bit lighter touch for the maths and stats for those doing more qualitative subjects. If I share with you, uh, the, the, the maths question is very similar to a very tough A-level paper where it is particularly challenging for all applicants is the timing and the speed of of efficiency needed in responding to all the questions involved and obviously getting them right but covering the whole paper is is a very tough challenge and that's the nature of the UGAA. The topics tend to come from uh, uh, the challenges that were faced in the 20th and the 21st century particularly and uh, people are asking me, Peter, how can we encourage our students as counsellors to, to follow through? So basically topics and issues that we're all facing now, big, uh, most major one is the effect of the pandemic, for example, which may well come up as a question next year uh, in the IFP papers uh, on inequality and the increasing gap between rich and poor. Um, the growth of technology and artificial intelligence, uh, the impact of technology and robotics, on the world of work and the future of employment, quite significant. Questions sometimes talk about disparity. While well, we're seeing it particularly now with the uh, disparity between modern health services in the developed world, we're all struggling, some badly, but the poorer countries will be impacted even harsher as the pandemic reaches those parts of the southern hemisphere. So keeping up with the future trends in society and issues is important. Impact of globalization, not just for city development, but globalization as a process as well, with movements now of anti-globalization, climatic change, sustainability. These are all very important aspects that tend to be threads and themes and topics that students can be reading um, uh, even before they join the IFP and encourage students to, to, to do so, so as to have a, a real interest as a global citizen also as, as a global graduate of things to come. So that's just an outline. Uh, uh, Olga, I'll, I'll put together uh, some material um, for more detail on the IFP. Uh, the rest of the slides, I think most colleagues um, having met with some of you already, you have a good knowledge of, of many of our partners anyway, but this is just a summary slide 
of uh, the leading aspects of Queen Mary, Royal Holloway. Uh, again, it needs to be regarded. Royal Holloway has the highest ranking in many of its areas than some of the other University of London colleges. Uh, maybe not overall, but in subject areas, it's got the highest improved ranking and it's a small college as well. Remember, it's only 10,000 students. It's one of the only colleges I know where they can still offer personal tutorials one on one, similar to an Oxbridge experience each week to their students if they so wish. Uh, more so than some of the other universities that have 20 or 1,000 more students. I hope from what I've said in the presentation gives you uh, confidence in much of those areas that are highlighted there in terms of quality assurance. As I said before, we're a recognised teaching centre of University of London. That's why we can deliver the IFP and the grad dips for University of London. We're QAA uh, approved and uh, UKBI registered, of course. So therefore, these are all quality uh, kite marks for the success of, of what we do uh, at On Campus London. We do have the UFP, which uh, most of you will be aware of. Uh, this too is an is a, a exciting platform for students. So if students took our IFP test and uh, we believe they need more time for English, we would tend to offer UFP placement as well particularly for if it's the humanities or for the uh, economics and finance pathway. Um, and these are the modules that they study. And this, this platform gives students still the opportunity of applying to top UK universities, including King's College actually for some of the subject areas. Uh, but it's the uh, IFP, the LSE, and, and several others, the top ranked, highly top ranked universities prefer, particularly if they're applying with a, a course that requires mathematics, for economics and finance, because the depth of the IFP maths is, is much deeper than nearly all most foundation courses. And London, uh, well, yes, uh, very different period of time now. London in, lock, in almost semi lockdown, um, but uh, things pass, things will pass and it's still ranked uh, as one of the world's uh, best university cities, namely because of the number of universities and opportunities uh, being provided. Uh, the picture there is of the British Library at the top. It looks a bit like a battleship, doesn't it? Uh, that, that is literally 10 minutes walk away from where we are. And our students have opportunity of registering also with the British Library uh, for access to resources and, and, and readings. And there we are in the central part of area of, of Bloomsbury up on the left hand side. But Peck is next to UCL um, opposite SOAS in the area of Russell Square. And uh, literally at the end of the road, 100 metres or so, you have uh, the British Museum. And Holborn uh, is just around the corner. And that's where LSE can be found near Holborn and Chantry Lane. And then a further short walk takes you into the central area of London. Uh, which is totally empty at the moment. If you look at the the cameras and the and the webcasts, etc. Uh, but things will eventually return to normal, perhaps in another four, five, six weeks, and uh, with different measures, of course. But things hopefully being in readiness for September, uh, October term. And then uh, Olga, you can you can describe this no doubt to colleagues with our accommodation and welfare uh, provision. Uh, most students reside in Piccadilly Court uh, where we have supervisors, which isn't too far away on two stops, I think, on the underground, or they have the choice of walking distance even from St Pancras Way, which is very close to where we are. Again, students uh, often uh, do, do apply for this program for the IFP and UFP. Uh, they have to be 17 to become members of our academic community at On Campus London and to register with uh, Birkbeck University as well. So therefore uh, 17 plus uh, and uh, with that comes the requirements of uh, needing a guardianship. More information can be found from Olga or from the uh, On Campus website. And there you have Vadim, a uh, Ukrainian student who, who left us, uh, progressed on to LSE and hearing from him recently, he's doing well. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge, a bit of a jump. Uh, he's very grateful for the support that he was given in our, our learning community. It's very different when you join a community of over 20,000 students 
where the majority also are post grad research. So confidence um, is, is extremely needed to, to manage oneself as an independent learner and seek out the best of teaching and learning in, in any institute. LSE particularly is inspiring because of the nature of their academics being world leading and also the nature of their teaching is done through many, many guest speakers who tend to be very prominent in the field of their subject areas as politics, world politicians, um, uh, business people, and with its high profile and attraction of employers, they have a strong reason to engage with LSE uh, also. So there's constant activity day and evening at LSE and our students who have a pretty full timetable with us uh, in the daytime, uh, they have the opportunity of the weekend and also the workshops being offered at uh, LSE and also UCL evening at lunchtime lectures as well. Oh yes, and students sometimes progress on to St Andrews. I keep forgetting. <laughs> we have fewer students going to St Andrews than we do to, to LSE. But King's College, Queen Mary, uh, those are, 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 are the most uh, popular. King's College particularly is very competitive as it's in the top 20 ranking. And Olga, is it okay um, if I conclude now? Any questions that colleagues might have? Uh, yes, thank, yes, you, thank Peter. you, Peter. Uh, uh, I think, I think uh, uh, if uh, agents will have any questions, just please uh, write it in the chat or just you can unmute your microphone and ask a question to Peter. I'm quite happy to uh, forward on these slides to you, Olga, and also mm -hmm. to have uh, a little bit more of a detailed sheet on information about the UGAA so that students have a good insight. Um, obviously, it's a selection process to be invited to take the UGAA, but what we find is the majority of students who take the IFP, um, if they're not successful with LSE, they tend to land in King's College, they tend to Lancaster, Bristol, top ranked universities, and many of them have given feedback to say they've progressed very well with first class degrees, and then their ambition is postgraduate, uh, maybe back to LSE or even Cambridge and Oxford. So uh, it, it's a high quality program that gives quality uh, platforms and opportunities for our students. But I'll send on the, more of that information to you at the close of day. Peter, can I just ask you to tell some words about the study process at this moment? So, because some agents there ask me how actually, what is happening now in on-campus London and how the student will assess uh, in June. Can you just tell just some few words about the situation now? Sure, the, um, this is uh, the response for everyone involved in the field of education, universities, schools, colleges, uh, is to go for, uh, is to deliver taught programs, the teaching online uh, using different media platforms. This is even with our high schools and primary schools. It's a bit of a challenge, obviously, as uh, uh, as teachers, lecturers uh, have, have had to move over to a different mode of delivery. But for on campus, it's been successfully put in place uh, after the last couple of weeks. Uh, and the feedback that we, we're receiving, the teachers are receiving is very favorable. Students are engaged. They may well still be in the UK or returned home uh, because of family instruction to do so. And uh, I, I think the attendance on the, on the webinars and the online classes is, is pretty high. So students are very keen to keep continuity and progression uh, in their academic learning. And the style of, of teaching is is all through uh, the web. Uh, it's amazing how the internet is managing everything like this. I'm, I'm absolutely amazed. The demand on it must be phenomenal. Um, and the assessments, uh, the academic dean and the faculties and centre heads are, are finalising the uh, assessment uh, as alternatives because obviously there won't be uh, examinations as such sitting in a room and taking the exam so that's to be confirmed quite soon as to those arrangements but um, UCAS itself is operating as normal um, uh, deadlines are more or less on schedule our schooling system because no there won't be any A levels exams or GCSEs so uh, the way that uh, 
indication of the students' grades is being done by teacher assessment based on the previous record of mock exams, assessments in class, and providing firm evidence of that student is achieving grade A's or B's and forwarding that through to the exam boards. And uh, therefore that's being fed through to the UCAS. So um, things are, are trying to keep as business as usual within reason or business as unusual, uh, but working towards that framework of normality for the normal cycle of UCAS confirmation for places. Our students will be included in that and also in preparation for clearing. Obviously, this is a very extraordinary time and unusual way of doing things, but the, 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 but the, the ambition is to keep things as normal so as to feed through into universities. Whether teaching will start in September will depend on the government measures being announced, continuing being reviewed, uh, and whether international students will be able to travel from their own countries or to travel into the UK. All this still is, is a little bit uncertain and developing uh, literally uh, as we progress day by day uh, with government decision making and instructions from World Health Organization. But I see it that things will come to a normality again round about sort of um, October time and uh, the colleges and universities are preparing a range of scenarios for uh, online delivery or for face to face teaching commencing sometime from the, the midterm of, of um, October, November onwards. If not, it'll be with January uh, delivery, so it is unusual. But students do need to anticipate that this is a global situation affecting uh, every every aspect of our global society in many different parts of the world. And therefore we have to uh, balance up the right aspects of safety and concern for for everyone involved. So we'll be response responding to the government measures, but universities and colleges are already uh, gearing up different scenarios for that. But um, obviously I think uh, on campus is keeping all our colleagues informed as to those developments on a weekly basis. Is that right, Olga? Yes, yes, you're, you're right. Actually, yeah, we had a lot of updates every week, even every day, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Every day, we have a daily bulletin. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. My, my, my advice is it, this is extraordinary. This is unusual. It's very, it's, it, but we have to respond accordingly. Uh, and I think, you know, the quiet moments, obviously trying to keep up a routine, people uh, having to work from home, families all working together, coming together. It is highly exceptional, extraordinary, unusual. But at the same time, it does give space for us to, to have a calm, maybe reflection, deeper reflection and to read. Very important. And I don't mean just online as well and screen work, but to read and reflect. And this is a time for maybe a little bit more questioning of of all the things when we in our hectic lives rushing around and dashing around and at the moment in uk probably in your own countries is will it be the same when we return to normal or normancy um that's an interesting question maybe we're asking questions even now about less pollution uh less less stress less traffic less congestion <laughs> uh, the way we work as well do we have to go to the office every day to work in the bank or whatever so um interesting questions will come from that which i'm sure will will change things in the long term let's hope yes 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 i agree with you um peter thank you very much for your presentation for your webinar for your time it was really great, I think, uh, information for all or not only for agents, but for uh, on campus staff as well. Um, thank you for your particip uh, participation and um, just a quick reminder about our next webinar with Peter next week. We will talk about four years degrees with work placement. Uh, it will be, I think, next uh, next Wednesday. Um, so thank you very much for your participation. Have a great day today and rest of your week and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, go well. Cheerio.